morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever applies to you. Uh, let's get started with this tutorial. This is just the way myself, how I try to get the best pictures and videos of the hummingbirds on our back porch or deck. And you want to keep in mind that you want to use the normal white sugar you get from the store. And you can heat it on the stove with four parts water, one part sugar for the hummingbird nectar, and let it cool down before you pour the nectar into the feeder. Now, these are the type of feeders I use, except I have the red hanger as opposed to the black hanger that you see here. If you search under the word mosaic, and then also put hummingbird feeders, you should find them. Uh, and I really like these because bees are not able to get to the nectar unless you accidentally spill some of the nectar on the outside of the lid. However, of course, you can use whatever feeder that, that you prefer. Now, these are the feeders on our deck. As you can see here, there's one feeder above, and there are two that are below the flower basket. So to make sure that I get the right shot, I want the bird to come to the feeder where I'm filming. So I take the feeder above and one of the feeders below and I hide them like you see here. So that leaves one feeder for the hummingbirds. Notice how my camera is, is close to the feeder. I make sure that I do not crop in the shot. I just get a normal, up close, autofocus or manual focus. Uh, those type of settings are actually best. Uh, sometimes I shoot from the side, other times I'll shoot from another direction and because these birds change directions also. However, after I've made the proper settings on my camera and before I start shooting, I set the camera up close to the feeder like you see here. I do not start filming. I leave the area and I wait until the hummingbird gets used to the camera being there. Usually it may only take about 15 minutes or so, or it might take a little bit longer. And then you wait till they come and they feed there comfortably. And once they stop feeding, or when you're ready to film and they stop feeding and fly away, go back to the camera, turn it on, and record. But then back away, go back 10 feet, or in my case, I, I go back inside our home. And I let the camera record for two to three minutes or so. And if the hummingbird has not shown up, then I go back out to the camera and I erase the footage and I set it to record again. And then I go back inside the house and wait. And I continue that process until the hummingbird arrives and I get the film or I finally get the shot. So you have to be patient, but it does pay off. Uh, here are some shots I filmed. And as you can see, if, if you get a good angle, uh, you can see the colors uh, of this one. I was very happy to get this shot. It just amazes me how just a little tilt of the head and it turns pink just like that. So this is one of my favorites. Now after a while, if you do not take a camera with you and you just stand a couple of feet or less from the feeder without moving, the hummingbirds will get used to you and they will start feeding near you. Here's a shot, for example, I got filming up close and holding the camera. And I made sure here, and you're going to see this in a moment here, I made sure that I focused in on the area of the feeder, making the background blurry, but getting a nice shot once you see the hummingbird here arriving. This other one here, I call Spider-Man because he's got so many that colors. It looks just like a, he's wearing a Spider-Man mask. So these are some um, just suggestions. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. And hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to subscribe, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. You guys have a great day.